Hey ladies and gentlemen, this is Luminous and you're watching a guide on Axe. Axe is a melee strength hero that serves as an initiator and a utility hero for most lineups. He's also regarded as the only true tank in Dota due to his ability to taunt enemies into attacking him. Contrary to popular belief, laning Axe is completely viable, though this guy will mostly focus on the jungle Axe as it's the most common way of playing him. Despite having decent stat growth, Axe by no means a late game force since his skills and item choices scale poorly as the game progresses. Axe will find himself in low health most of the time, and understanding when to retreat or when to go ball steep is an important quality in playing a good Axe. Berserker's Call is one of the few spells in Dota that forces enemies to attack the caster. Aside from the taunt, Berserker's Call also grants Axe a whopping 40 armor for the duration, making him practically immune to physical damage. The AoE of the Call isn't impressive, and due to the casting delay of the spell, Berserker's Call can be a difficult spell to land without the help of a setup disable or specific items. Lastly, since Berserker's Call affects magically immune units, it retains its usefulness even in the later portions of the game when carriers are starting to grab Black King bars. Berserker's Call is a decent melee range disable, but beyond that, it's quite lackluster as a spell. If for nothing else, Battle Hunger's 627 damage potential at max level makes this spell one of the greatest killing spells in the early game. Battle Hunger will deal damage over its duration, and if the afflicted hero gets a last hit, Battle Hunger will be disabled. With that said, if Axe could zone enemies away from the Crete Wave, or fire off a Battle Hunger on a fleeting hero, the target will most likely never reach a base alive. The 8% slow on the enemy and the 8% stackable movement increase on Axe is just gravy, letting Axe fire off even more Battle Hunger with a low 5 second cooldown and 900 cast range. The 900 cast range gets a special mention since it allows Axe to snipe off low HP retreating heroes or give the ability for a low HP Axe to hang back in fights and still contribute to the team. Battle Hunger's damage and slow gets outclassed in late game situations, so exploit the spell's early game dominance when you can. Counter Helix is Axe's primary offensive passive when he's being attacked. Dealing damage in a 275 AoE, Counter Helix allows Axe to jungle, cut off creep waves during tower pushes, and flash farm decently in all stages of the game. Several procs of counter helix and dives or chases generally will be enough to set up a coaling blade or a battle hunger kill, even with low levels of counter helix. Hey, its physical damage will cut up enemies in an early game when hero's armor value are fairly low. However, keep in mind that counter helix will lose its potency in late game when heroes are stacked with armor. Counter helix is what allows Axe to be ultra manly in both the lane and jungle. So don't believe in Counter Helix, instead believe in the Axe that believes in his own Counter Helix. Because Coaling Blade is a single target nuke that insta-kills a hero when the hero is below a certain HP threshold, it makes for a great finishing move once Axe and other spells have weakened the prey. The killing blow of Coaling Blade will go through magical immunity and remove all buff on the target, meaning nothing is safe from fatality. Like Monovoid, getting into the habit of quickly checking an enemy's HP bar before using Coaling Blade is a great idea. Since not only does the spell reward an insta-kill, it also grants a 25% speed buff and a 600 AoE for 6 seconds. This buff is useful for chasing down more enemies or retreating from fights. The ultimate killing blow, Coaling Blade shows everybody that Axe is a true boss on the team fight. With these points in mind, let's quickly look at the standard build for Axe. By far, Battle Hunger is Axe's highest damaging spell, and maxing it by level 7 will give Axe the highest killing potential out of all his other spells. Maxing Hunger will require Axe to play accordingly, which means leaving the comforts of the jungle and start backstabbing enemies in lane to net kills. Counter Helix at level 1 and 4 will ensure that Axe could jungle early and in between ganks, and will be maxed at level 10. A single point of Berserker's Call can be taken at level 8 or 9 when Axe has a mana pool to support other spells, but is mostly used for cancelling any channeling spells or TP early on. In between the 8% slow on enemies, 8% speed buff on Axe, your ally spells and disables, as well as all the counter helix procs from the enemy creeps, diving enemies with battle hunger cannot be any easier. Axe will be doing lots of diving and backstabbing out of the jungle early into the game, providing lane dominance for the mid and side lanes. Keep in mind that Axe is largely an early to mid game based hero, and since battle hunger and counter helix all scale downwards in effectiveness as the game progress, take advantage of Axe's early game dominance when you can. In early game tower diving, Axe is not tanky enough to sustain damage from multiple heroes, creeps, and the tower. As such, be careful when moving past towers without creep support or drawing the tower aggro altogether. As a rule of thumb, dropping battle hunger and right clicking near the enemy as opposed to onto the enemy will avoid tower aggro. If the enemy is running further back and away from the safety of the tower, proceed to chop them up with your axe. If the enemy is playing ring around the rosy under the tower, battle hunger slow will allow Axe's ally to catch up for the easy kills. 
Contrasting to tanking tower shots, X wants to tank enemy creep waves, especially when chasing enemies. Should be sure to right click on enemy heroes to draw creep aggro when it's safe to do so. Due to skill set, X could easily facilitate ganks and tower pushes in the early portions of the game. Bulldozing his way past the tower, battle hunger against enemy heroes and counter helix against creeps could clear the way for allies to push down towers with ease. The disruption of Berserker's Call and Battle Hunger also makes Axe a dangerous counter ganker with a teleport scroll against enemies that are diving your allies. As team fights are beginning to occur, make sure that Axe is in the center of each and every one of them. Because of the waning power of his skill set, Axe depends more on the utility that his items can provide for his team in fights. Similar to other utility based support heroes, Axe provides what the team needs with his items, but drastically differing from these supports, he does so in the center of the team fight instead of being in the back lines. Due to the aggressive nature of Axe's playstyle, he may suffer from a few deaths throughout the game. Keep in mind that as long as Axe has provided enough disruption in enemies' positioning and focus fire, his death is not in vain, as Axe's teammates should be able to clean up and win the team fight overall. If Axe goes in first and survives the initial onslaught from the enemy team, know that Axe could still contribute to the team fight with Battle Hunger or even re engage with Berserker's Call. Playing a successful axe requires a bestial sense of not giving a f and diving and killing as many as possible, but still retaining the intellectual decision making and knowing when to retreat and give up. Finding the right sets of items for axe will be difficult, since axe at core is a fairly item dependent hero, yet he's still expected to purchase utility items for the team, all the meanwhile not getting much farm. Axe requires a decent amount of regeneration items, as well as items that will help him tank in fights. Mana items will also be needed since his skills are quite mana intensive and Axe has a lackluster intelligent growth. Lastly, mobility items are also desired since they help the placement of Berserker's Call and turn Axe into a potent initiator. In terms of regeneration items, Tranko Boots is by far the cheapest in the regen to cost ratio, which will allow Axe to stay in tip top condition in between ganks and jungling. Tranko Boots also deserve a special mention due to how early Axe could purchase them in the game, which synergized greatly with Battle Hunger and all the tower diving that he will be doing. Vanguard or Pipe and the components that goes into them also provides great regeneration early on, as well as some decent form of resistance to certain type of damage. If no one on the team is making it, even mech can be a decent utility item for Axe. The mana investment is heavy, but it provides more survivability than any other item for the same cost if Axe could activate it. As for mana based items, a long arcane boots or a soul ring will generally solve most of Axe's mana problems. Soul ring provides more HP and mana over time, though it's quite dangerous to activate in the middle of fights, whereas arcane boots provides more utility that benefits the team. Deciding which one of these items largely comes down to personal preference and what the team needs more of. Magic Stick or Magic Wand deserve a special mention because it fills up on Axe's mana pool with a full activation, and since Axe is constantly in the front lines, the charges will stack quite quickly. Another special mention goes to Urn of Shadows. Everything that it gives fits Axe perfectly, and the extra 150 HP loss on enemy heroes goes a long way in securing kills with Battle Hunger. Mobility item wise, Blink Dagger is the most iconic item choice for Axe, as the precise placement of Berserker's Call, as well as the ability to chase, is invaluable to the team. However, it's a fairly pricey item that provides no region or stats beyond its mobility. Also, when purchasing Blink, keep in mind that too early of a purchase will leave Axe too weak to tank or simply won't have enough mana for his other spells. Alternate to Blink includes four staff that adds to regen and Axe's mana pool, or drums that grants great stats and mobility for the entire team when Axe needs it. In some games, mobility items are a must in order to set up ally spells or keep up with enemies. In other games, however, go is better spent on items for tanking as the mobility is more or less unneeded. The most important situational item to discuss is Blade Mail. Regardless of Berserker's Call, since Axe is generally in the center of fights, an activated Blade Mail could distract a lot of punishment that Axe is tanking. Beyond providing some decent armor for Axe, it could be a great hoser for certain bursty heroes such as Drow or Lina. It does have an awkward interaction with Berserker's Call, however, as Call does force enemies to attack Axe, but since it also gives Axe an extra 40 armor, the return damage won't be anything too impressive. Another situational item is Aghanim Scepter. On paper, it gives almost everything that Axe wants. More HP, more mana, and a 6 second cooldown of Culling Blade makes Axe extremely dangerous heroes in teamfights. Being able to grant MS by insta-killing creeps and engagements is also extremely underrated if the team needs to retreat. What makes Scepter a situational item is his 4.2k cost, as it grants very little for Axe before finishing it. Axe generally needs other utility items to support the team, 
Scepter is a great item to pick up if X somehow has a pile of gold, but shouldn't be the first item that he rushes for. The most important thing to understand about Axe's item build is that it's entirely situational and is dependent on what the allies and enemies are. A pipe rush with Vitaly Booster will do well against a team of casters, but poorly against a team full of physical DPSers. Likewise, to reiterate on a previous point, mobility items are not a must for Axe in every single game, and it generally comes down to team composition more than anything else. Lastly, one common trap that new Axe players fall into is stacking too heavily on regeneration and tanking items. Having a full set of Hood, Vanguard, and Heart is nice if the enemy is constantly focusing on Axe, but keep in mind that Berserker's Call only lasts for 3 seconds, and beyond that, this set of inventory provides little to no utility for the rest of the team. Learning which items to purchase in any given situation is half of playing a great Axe. The best way to describe Axe's playstyle is calculated aggression. The skill set gives them the ability to drive people away or do a lot of damage in the center of fights. A common error to Axe is biting off more than he could chew, and deciding to overstay his welcome against several heroes will generally be fatal. To that end, a scaredy cat Axe also does very little for the team, since much of his utility and damage comes from tanking. Understanding when Axe is strongest and when his effectiveness is starting to drop is also important for facilitating pushes or fights. To the same light, understanding what items to build in many situations is paramount for successful Axe play. Axe is a very knowledge-based hero, so wear that thinking cap when you're playing Axe. As always, I hope you guys found this guy helpful and educational. My next guy is going to be on the hard carry hero, Medusa. Here's a link to my anti-mage guy if you haven't checked it out yet. And of course, here's a link to all of my guides if you want to check out the entire playlist. As always, if you guys want to see more of these guys, liking the video and subscribing to me is the best way to support me. And that's it for now. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And until next time, this is Luminous, signing off to you guys.